Hello, how are you? God bless you. Welcome to the House of His Glory. I'm Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones. And week after week, I'm telling you, I'm just so grateful to have another week to spend with you, to uh, worship with you, to fellowship with you. I'm just so grateful for every single one of you that show up, that hang out, that talk with us over in the chat window. If by chance you are uh, tuning in at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning at thehouseofhisglory.com forward slash live. Thank you for chatting with us, for hanging out with us, for giving me a shout out and an amen every once in a while. <laughs> And if you happen to be watching at any other time uh, uh, during the day or during the week or any other time at all uh, from the house of his glory.com forward slash messages or if you are one of the 103 people <laughs> amen and God bless you that might be watching from the app uh, and if you don't have the app and you'd like to have the app, you can download it at uh, uh, any iOS or Android app store. And uh, the name of it is iChurch for Life. Um, if you are watching us from those platforms or from YouTube even, we still um, have weekly visitors um, watching us from YouTube so I'm not going to discontinue that so long as you guys are out there um, but I'm so grateful for everyone who um, who worships with us who tunes in um, checking me out um, and, and has nothing but positive things to say if you would like to do so you can email me at contact at the house of his glory dot com um, thank you God bless you I have to admit though you know I think about every every two or three weeks I get somebody um, whether it's by email or um, through Google or on Facebook that has something not really nice or good to say about me, about uh, this ministry that God has blessed me uh, to, to, uh, to cover for him, uh, to offer for the kingdom of God. And you know what? Just pray with me as I pray for them. Um, you know, that, uh, that, that God would show them the truth. Uh, that that if for nothing else that they would learn how uh, to lift up God's women, right? Um, and to not think that they're doing anything positive for God or the kingdom of God by putting down and trashing women in general, no matter you know what our calling or our profession might be. So if you have anything good and encouraging to say, thank you. Otherwise, I'm praying for you. God bless you. <laughs> and you don't have to you don't have to watch, right? You can go anywhere and worship anywhere. <laughs> so that's just a word uh, for for some of the the folk who waste their time tuning in just so they can tell me something that isn't true. <laughs> Right, so so pray with me on that. And you know what, if you would like prayer over anything else, <laughs> and you would like for me to pray with you or pray for you, you can text the word prayer to 818-873-3370. And if you are visiting for the first time and you uh, would like to say, hey, I have been tuning in, I have been checking it out, um, please text the word hello to 818-873-3370. I would love to send you uh, a welcome uh, email and a Starbucks gift card just thanking you for, for hanging out with us. Um, and <laughs> you know somebody wasted their time to, to text that number that said not as the first name, A period, fan as the last name. 
Wow, people will really spend some time to do a whole lot of funky junk. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I didn't even know I was gonna say all that to you today. You know what, let's go into this little brief introduction. I'll come back uh, with opening prayer. Clearly, I need to pray. Thanks for being here with me today. Now it's air in our chest, that's why we're singing it back to you For every battle you want, for everything that you've done And everything that you're gonna do Seen too much to ever doubt it Feel so good, I wanna shout it Yeah, when I really think about it All I wanna do, all I wanna do is That's why we Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this day and this opportunity to come together in the spirit, to come together over this digital medium, to fellowship with one another as we fellowship with you, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we come before you, knowing that you have a word for us, that you have a message for us, that you have a desire that uh, to be with us. And so we thank you this day for this word. We thank you for this time together. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to help us lay aside every distraction, every burden, every weight, every issue that might keep us from wholly and completely receiving what you have for us today, Father. I thank you for everyone who has come to this message. I thank you uh, for whenever they are worshiping with us that you would find a way to touch them, to let them know that no matter when they're worshiping with us, no matter how or from where, Father God, that you knew exactly uh, who would come to this word. And so this word is meant for each and every one of us. Touch us with your presence. Let us know that you are with us. Draw us closer to your spirit. If there's anyone who does not know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior, if they're curious, if they're hurting, if they have questions, if they have a need in their lives, Father, draw them closer to truth, to your love, to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is alive and that he died on the cross for their sins and that he rose again on the third day so that they could be forgiven of all their sins so that they could live the life that you created for them to live father thank you for opening our hearts and our minds and allowing us to 
understand this message, to receive this message, to not let the enemy come in and snatch this word away from us, to not let what we understand about the world and our issues and what we've previously been taught and, and the things that we think we desire and the path that we might already be on to keep it, uh, to allow those things to keep us from truly seeing uh, this word coming to pass in our lives, Father, but instead use this word to open our hearts, to open our minds, to give us clarity, to give us new direction, to give us a revelation that we have a purpose, that we have a reason, that we have a work to do, that you have a desire for us and every aspect of our lives that can only be fulfilled when we believe it and when we trust you for it. And so, Father, heal our bodies, cleanse our minds, uh, um, keep us uh, uh, connected to you and connected to this word that we might be examples of this word. Teach us how to love one another. Teach us how to, uh, to walk in the power of prayer so that as we continue to pray for Ukraine, as we continue to pray for those who are in need, to, to uh, pray for the downtrodden, to have compassion on others, to walk in love, that we would do so with a power that gets stuff done. Because your word says that the prayers of the righteous avail much. And it's time, Lord, that we avail much in this world. And so we thank you again for this word. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. You know what? Um, I tell you what, I just, uh, oh, I'm sure it was Holy Spirit uh, just convicted me during that prayer that it is time um, that we have uh, a, a real time of prayer. And so here's what I think that uh, I'm going to do, you know, I've got messages designed for, for um, a, 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 not designed, but in mind for each week uh, this month, and, and I'm, I'm wondering if God is going to circumvent uh, one of those messages, especially uh, as um, I'm going on vacation the last uh, week of June, of June, and so I'm, maybe I'm going to put together a prayer service for that week. I've asked you last week that if you have testimonies, testimonies of, of healing or testimonies of faith or testimonies of uh, miraculous things that God has done in your life, even if it's a little thing, but you know that you know that it was God that did it, um, send those in. Email them to me at contact at the house of his glory. And, and, uh, and maybe either the last Sunday or uh, the first Sunday in July, we'll have that uh, a prayer service, testimony service, where I'll just relay those testimonies, um, where I will um, uh, just section off the service in corporate prayer. Um, and, and and there's just really some some heavy things on my heart about how we as the house of his glory are going to represent God in this world. The perspective that, uh, that I hope that we would share collectively as a representation of, uh, of who we are as a congregation in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so, um, and so yeah, I'll mull that around. If you have any suggestions, email them to me um, and uh, if you'd even like to send a video um, you could you could do that um, I think Gmail uh, through well yeah there it's easier to do it through there <laughs> um, so just think about it and, and send me what you got and for now I will stop yammering <laughs> let's go into this song of praise I'll come right back with the message God has for us today. Bye. 
Okay, I am back. It is June 12th, 2022, and this month of June, we've started a new sermon series uh, called The Fight, The Fight. And, um, you know, I really wanted to outline um, some aspects of our fight as believers. Um, and it really has been a segue from last week's, I mean, excuse me, last month's message on healing, because last week we talked about the fight of faith, right? And, and how we just capped off how everything that we learned last month was still um, instruction on how to walk in faith for everything. And so as we, uh, as we move into these messages for this month, it's still uh, keeping in with that theme. Um, it's still rooted and grounded in those instructions. Um, but I think this message might be a little different. Um, it's already started out different with <laughs> the way I've been yammering and talking and carrying on uh, uh, for the top of service. But I will teach a little bit. I hope I do preach a little bit because usually when I preach, that's when I allow, you know, I, I stop thinking about stuff and let Holy Spirit just really say what he wants to say. Um, and so uh, and so I just want to just move a little more freely into this message, even as I teach 
and allow Holy Spirit to expound upon um, the thoughts and ideas that um, that He's given me uh, for today's message. And so, and so, uh, like I said last week, we we're talking about the fight of faith, right? And that it applies to every single promise, every single blessing, every single gift, every single aspect of our inheritance that's written in the Word of God. Uh, and so it might be, uh, you know, it might be easy, so to speak, for us to apply this aspect of faith to uh, our healing. We can conceptualize that. That's what I mean. Like we can understand, okay, we're, we need to walk in faith for healing. We need to f walk in faith uh, for abundance or for provision or for supply or for prosperity or for protection or for deliverance, so on and so forth, right? Um, but when it comes to our future, when it comes to the purpose that God has for us, that's when it's vague, it's more difficult, and maybe we've never even really thought about it. But when we're talking about the fight, listen, there is a promise of a future that God has for us that we also have to fight for. For as well. And so let me first give you some background on why I say there's a future, a God-given purpose that we have um, that comes uh, specifically from God for each and every one of us, and that is in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now many of us have heard this verse a lot. I quote this verse a lot. I also muddle up this verse a lot because most of us hear this verse in the, in the um, NIV. That was just the King James. Let me also read it to you in the NIV and you'll see why I say I muddle it up. I like to mix up both the versions and so the NIV says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future wow I mean, it's all good either way that you look at it. His thoughts towards us, his plans towards us, they are good. Uh, they are not evil. They're not to harm us, um, but they're to give us a hope and a future and an expected end. Whew, just drop the mic, right? That's the shouting spot right there. Um, and look. From what we learned last month and even last week, if God gives us something, that means we've already received that something, right? If God gives it, it's ours to take it. It's already ours. Whatever he gives is already ours. I know it's such a duh, duh thing, but you know, when we talked about healing, you know, there's so many, so many of us, even myself, have been caught in these ideas that, well, uh, God hasn't healed me yet. Well, um, I don't know if God will heal me. Or, you know, this is just the way of life. I just have to accept this. You know, in other words, there is no healing for this. I'm stuck with uh, this bad eyesight, these allergies. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, that's just the way I am. I get strep throat every November. Oh, you know, that's just what happens when you work in construction all your life. You know, you're going to have back pain. You're going to have, right? Or, you know, I just have a stressful life and uh, you know I'm just gonna have to live with uh, these migraines or you know I'm just gonna have to live with uh, this diabetes that's what I get for eating that pie you know I don't have anybody else to blame but myself because I'm the one who is addicted to sweets you know we make up these excuses that really uh, uh, nullify and remove us and uh, separate us from the truth that no, 
whatever God has given, we already have it. It's already ours. And and so when I say we've already received it, if I can keep drilling it into your mind in that in that frame, like you're like, no, I haven't received my healing. My back still hurts, my feet still hurt. You know, I still have to take this medication. No, I haven't received it. But if God has given it, you have received it. You just haven't learned how to take it, how to claim it, or how to keep it by faith. And so that applies to our future as well. Because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that he gives us a hope and a future. He gives us an expected end. That is something that God has given us. So if God has given it, what's the answer? We have received it. So that means we have received from God a hope and a future. We have received from Him an expected end. An expected end that is good and not evil. Plans not to harm us. Not to do us, you know, when people are like, oh, do you think God is trying to get my attention? Oh, do you, no, He's not sickness, lack, poverty, disease, destruction is not a commodity. It's not currency. It's not a vehicle that God is going to use when he sent Jesus to eradicate those things. Amen? And so uh, God has an expected end, a future that you can expect from him. It's a hope that you can expect from him. You can walk in the full expectation that there is a hopeful future for you and that you know how that future is going to end. That if you're following the future and the plans and the hopes and the thoughts that God has for you, then that future is going to end in good and not evil. And it's in no way going to harm you or be harmful to you. God has a plan for you. He's always thinking his thoughts towards you, hoping that you will catch on to them, that you will latch onto them, that you will claim them, and that you will fight for them. Amen? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to fight for this future that God has given us. We're going to learn how to fight for this purpose, our God-given purpose that we have in the kingdom of God. Now, Paul had a purpose. Paul knew how his future was going to end up. When we look at chapters 19 through, I think, about 26, we see uh, this, this storyline that is wrapped around this understanding that, God, uh, that Paul had about uh, God's plans for his future. So I want to look at two specific verses in Acts 19, um, verse 21, and then Acts 23 and 11. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So Paul understands in the spirit that uh, that part of his plan, part of his purpose, part of his journeys um, in establishing ministries and uh, preaching the kingdom of God in these various cities uh, was to eventually go to Rome. Then he hears from God directly. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so must you bear witness also at Rome. So Paul knew his future. Paul knew his plan. Paul perceived in the spirit what God uh, had in mind for him. That's what I mean when I say God is always thinking his plans and his thoughts towards you. He wants us to uh, to worship him, to praise him, to pray to him, to 
to commune with him, to conversate with him, and to reach into that realm of understanding and knowledge and communication and relationship with him so that we can perceive his thoughts and his plans towards us. In chapter 19, Paul did that. His lifestyle of relationship with Holy Spirit revealed to him that he needed to, as he was passing through Macedonia and Achaia, that he needed to go to Jerusalem. And after that, he was going to have to go to Rome. I must go to Rome. Then several chapters later, <laughs> sometime later, right, after he has been uh, to Jerusalem, after he has witnessed Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, he has this vision, this image in the night of the Lord standing by him, of Jesus, the Jesus he never met, the Jesus that uh, he was persecuting Christians for believing in, right? That very same Lord who called him an apostle out of time was standing by him in this vision, in this night at night and it's written in red in the scriptures where Jesus Christ the Lord himself says to Paul and calling him by name be of good cheer Paul because as you have witnessed of me here in Jerusalem so must you do also in Rome so he perceived it in the spirit and he got confirmation of it from the Lord right and so Throughout the rest of these chapters, you see how Paul fights for this, this purpose. He fights for the future that has been promised to him. And I mean, he fights hard, let me tell you. Because as we saw in chapter 19, like he had his own ideas about, you know, okay, I'm going to go to this city and I'm going to go to this city and this city. But sometimes along the way, like... Holy Spirit was like, uh, 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 don't go to this one yet. Don't go here yet. Like, you know, it's just like with me and these messages. I know that God gives me a heart for these messages. Um, but sometimes he's like, uh, 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 I know you're going down this path. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that path. But I need you to stop off here first. I need you. I have a reason why I need you to, to go this direction before you head in that direction. And so there were times where Holy Spirit circumvented his plans uh, that he was trying, like if it had been up to him, he'd been like, book the trip. I've been to this city, I've been to this city, and now I'm ready to go to Rome. Let's, let's book the next boat to Italy, right? Um, but, but Holy Spirit had him on a roundabout path that wasn't of his own choosing. And then along the way, he gets uh, thrown into prison. He gets beaten. He gets um, uh, misused. He gets, you know, tossed into like the underbelly of the prison, right? And then when they find out that he's Roman by birth, they're like, oh no, we're going to get in trouble. So then they start shuffling him between this ruler and that leader, and they don't know what to do with him. They've still got him in shackles. They're now trying to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll treat him a, a little nicer, uh, right? We're not going to throw him in the underbelly of the prison. And so he gets to like visit with his, uh, with his people with his disciples he gets to visit with other churches while they're shuffling him back and forth trying to figure out what do we do with him you would think let me tell you if you had a purpose in mind if you had a plan and a goal that you were trying to get to if you were trying to start a business if you were trying to get a promotion on a job and something happened where you were thrown in jail where you were arrested and thrown into prison oh I guess guarantee you and me both we would believe that that plan that that goal was over right if we constantly felt like the holy spirit was saying no don't go that direction no don't go there no don't do that i know for myself it has happened already where i have i would easily just fold up that plan fold up that goal and say well i guess that's not what I guess I didn't hear from God, which is what I said uh, when it happened to me, you know, 
I second guessed myself. I questioned myself. I let doubt creep in. I let other people, you know, who meant well, say out loud the thoughts that I was thinking in my mind. Well, you know, maybe you weren't meant to do that. What makes you think you were supposed to do that? What makes you think you you could even have done that, right? And so we allow uh, uh, these kinds of circumstances to, to convince us, no, that's not our purpose. That's not our plan. That's not what God has for us. But Paul did not let it stop him. He knew that he knew that he knew that his future, his purpose was to go to Rome. And so even in prison, even in shackles, he knew he was going to get to Rome one day, one way, somehow. And so in part of shuffling him around, um, in, in handcuffs and shackles, chained to, you know, a warden, they put him on a ship to take him to Caesar because he, uh, you know, he he appeals to Caesar. This is not the way he thought he was or was trying to get to Rome in chapter 19. But, hey, I use what I've got. I'll go in the direction God has faced me. And so he appeals to Caesar, thinking that's a good way, since I'm already in prison, I'll appeal to Caesar, take me to Rome. So they put him on a ship with a bunch of prisoners on their way to Rome and shipwreck. There's a storm. It's a tempest, like a hurricane, right? Uh, they're throwing supplies overboard. The the experienced uh, sailors are like, we're going to die. We've done all that we can. And Paul tells them, we will not die. I'm on this ship. I have a purpose. I've been told by God, I need to go to Rome. And so we're going to Rome. And no matter what, simply because you are with me, no one will lose their lives. And that's the prayer I pray when I'm on an airplane. I'm like, I've got a purpose in the kingdom of God. And because I'm on this plane, this little turbulence is nothing. We're going to be okay. That's what I keep saying to myself because I know God has a purpose for me. And Paul knew that God had a purpose for him. And so even when uh, the ship run aground and, you know, the the prisoners couldn't swim and they're all floating on boards they ran into it the ship just broke to pieces and they're floating on boards to this island and and there's a uh, the island of Melita um and and there he gets bit by a viper and he just shakes the viper off into the fire right and he still goes about the business of healing people and he does get to Rome. That is the whole point. He had a purpose. He knew he had a purpose. He fought for that purpose no matter what the circumstance, what uh, stances were, and he fulfilled that purpose because God had given it to him and he knew God had given it to him and he fought through every circumstances holding on to not much more than that very promise um, and he knew it was a promise given to him by God. And so Jeremiah 29 and 11 is God's promise given to us for our future, uh, for our purpose, and, and, uh, and, and our hope in our expected end. And whatever God gives us, he does not change his mind about. It's without repentance, as it says in Romans 11. And 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Repentance. Repentance to repent, it literally means to change your mind. Metanoia is the word repent. We always hear it uh, taught and preached behind the pulpit. You know, repent, repent. We even see where John the Baptist was like, repent. And we think that simply means to stop sinning, to apologize for your sin, to turn away from your sin. Okay, it, it does mean, yeah, turn away, change your mind from the sin. But it means turn, 
uh, turn your mind from, change your mind from, turn away from how you think about God, how you think about Jesus, what you think about salvation and righteousness. There's so many things that we as uh, believers and new Christians need to change our minds about. But God does not change his mind about the gifts that he gives us and that the callings that he calls us to. I guess that's part of why I was speaking at the top of the hour about my calling. I, I know that I know that I know that my calling came from God. He spoke to me when I wasn't trying to listen. He He directed me when I uh, in this uh path when I was thinking I was heading on a different path. He revealed to me his plans and his future for me uh, was to pastor uh, a church for him called the house of his glory. I was on a different plan. I had a different future in mind. And this these are the, you see the manifestation of the plans and the thoughts that God is thinking towards me and continually thinking towards me. And so even when it looks like I'm scatterbrained, even when it looks like I'm trying to do too much, even when it looks like I've got too much on my plate, even when I, it looks like I'm trying to do it all by myself. No, I am fighting for the future and the plans that God has given me. I am not out here just willy-nilly skipping around like, ooh, let's do this, that, and the other thing and piling up my plate like, I am trying to make for myself my own future and my own purpose and my own plans. No, these are the thoughts and the plans that God is thinking towards me. This is me reaching into the spirit and saying, okay, what's next, Lord? Is this what you want me to do now, Lord? And this is me fighting for the future that God has for me when what you see doesn't look like it's going to be very much in the future. This is me saying, you know what? God's not changing his mind about me. God's not changing his mind about what he's called me to do. He has called me, uh, according to Ephesians 4 and 11, as a gift to the kingdom of God. What? You know that's not me trying to, you know, okay, I'm going to be a gift. No, Jeremiah 315 says, Behold, I give you pastors after my heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding. As a pastor, I am a gift to you. As a pastor, it is a gift of a calling for the kingdom of God. And God says he does not change his mind about his gifts. He does not change his mind about the calling that he has for you. Whatever your purpose is, whatever your gift of ministry, of purpose in the kingdom of God is, he's not changing his mind about it. Uh, that is his heart towards you. That is his desire towards you. And Psalm 37 and 4 talks about his desires for us as a people. Psalm 37 and 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Okay, we're right back to remembering that whatever God gives you is already yours. This says he gives us the desires of our heart. That when we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our heart. Now, let me just interject this teaching, all right? Because you will hear people just adamantly say, don't get it twisted. This is not what God is saying. And look, I, I do not ever want to be the one to just put my foot down and say what God will or will not say from his word. There are layers and layers of multitudes of truth that God can easily pull out of one verse. You know, I think, you know, I told you last month that out of Mark 11 and uh, 23 that I've been teaching on for years, for years now, like eight or more years, um, 
that I got a fresh revelation of it just last month. I think that uh, I counted seven, five or seven different revelations, I think it's five different revelations that I have received from John 3.16 alone. So you know what? Uh, there are layers of revelation that God can give you from any portion of his scripture, you know? And so I like to believe and choose to teach that Psalm 37 and 4 is God speaking two things to us at the same time that when we delight in him that he's going to put desires in our heart that are of him because we're close to him we're communing with him and and scripture says that you know that uh, as we behold jesus we are conformed into his image and into uh his uh his likeness his same image from glory to glory and so part of that uh that transformation is that our heart then becomes like his heart and we desire what he desires but i also like to believe that when we have that heart full of his desires that he has given to our hearts that then he will fulfill those desires of our hearts he leaves it wide open when we delight in him he will give us the desires of our heart he doesn't put any prerequisite stipulations loopholes or parameters on that verse he simply says delight in me and i will give you the desires of your heart and so part of those desires are our dreams right our our dreams and our goals and our own hopes for our future when we delight in him when we delight in him we can trust that that future that those dreams that those desires he's given us are ours for the taking so right all month we've been talking about healing but we've also talked about salvation the promises the blessings our inheritance and so again that includes our purpose that includes your future and everyone has a purpose i believe written into their very dna and so you might be you know a young person and you're not thinking about your future or your purpose you've got uh, other things to think about and maybe you know your future is just the next few months ahead of you, right? Maybe it might be the next year ahead of you. For some of you, it might only be the next day or the next week. And then there might be some of you that have lived a full life and you're thinking, I'm in my future. I'm looking for this, <laughs> this future. When is this future? this i'm in the future when is it over no <laughs> you might be thinking i'm past that uh that i fulfilled my purpose that i and that i'm living in the future that i was fighting for or working towards and i know many of us are of that age where we are still in the middle of our life uh we might feel like we are just getting started started at the at the peak of our life and we're still looking <laughs> we're still looking for a future uh we're still looking for our god-given purpose but i want to tell each and every one of you uh that i believe i truly believe that that there is a specific purpose that's written and embedded in your dna uh that doesn't necessarily end uh, at the end of your life or at the end of your job when you retire, you know, or, you know, when you graduate college or, you know, when you reach that job that you've uh, desired, that you've worked towards, that you studied for, when you reach that promotion. No, it's a purpose that's outside of a job or a career or your education. It's a purpose that is beyond uh, how much money you make or what age uh, you can retire uh, at it, it it's a purpose that has to do with the gifts and the skills and the talents and the insights and the perspective and the love and the compassion and the burden uh, that God has placed on your heart what do you have a heart 
for? What do you want to see changed in this world? Who do you have compassion towards? What breaks your heart when you see? Uh, is it is it starving kids? Is it uh, kids that um, are in the city with no opportunity? No. Um, no food or uh, no education? Is it uh, homelessness on the street? Is it uh, people who can't get uh, fair health care? Is it civil rights that, uh, you know, people can't vote and uh, they're gerrymandering and, and restructuring and trying to go back to uh, keeping people from voting? Is it that you have a heart for immigrants who are looking for a better life and, uh, and, and we've just got people who just want to kick them out the country like they're taking something from us as my son was mentioning earlier not uh, from his perspective that he heard someone else having this perspective but you know what does your heart have a burden for what are you compassionate about are you are you concerned about uh, what we're doing for the environment are you concerned about uh, people uh, dying before their time uh, from heart disease or stroke are you, are you concerned about animals going extinct? What is your burden? And I promise you, whatever it is, God has a way of tying that into the kingdom of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalm 139 uh, says, uh, one, 139 verse 14 says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and this my soul knows right well and I believe that when God knit us together in our mother's wombs as Psalm 139 and verse 15 says that he knit us together with a purpose with a reason that is tied into his heart that is tied into his being that is tied into the very image and the likeness of himself that he pours into each and every one of us that we are a creative and unique expression of God himself and how God wants to be expressed into the earth in a way that will point others to Jesus Christ I told a friend one time who had a passion for playing tennis and wanted to uh, go on the uh, on the uh, tournament circuit circuit and she was like yeah but you know uh, that can't be my purpose like you know she's looking for something more altruistic more holy I don't know and I'm like but think about it what if someone like yourself who doesn't fit the mold goes out and kills it and is like you know snapping up all of these you know tournament wins and people are like how do you do it and you say it's all Jesus He's given me the strength, the ability, and the desire to do it. What kind of an amazing testimony is that? So I'm telling you, whatever it is, it's yours. And you can fight for it. And, and John 10 and 10 says that the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And so some promises, blessings, and desires, the thief comes and he steals them outright. And some he uses other people to destroy them on our behalf. People telling you why you and you can't and you're nothing and you won't ever. And, and, and even innocently, what makes you think you can do that? And, and are you sure you have the education? Are you sure that's the right direction? And they don't even know. They don't even know how the enemy gets into your brain and uses that to destroy uh, what God has put in your heart. But your dreams, your dreams, your hopes, your desires for your future, your purpose, oh man, he lies and he deceives and he throws up obstacles and he will use anyone and anything and especially the people closest to you that love you and claim to know you to get you to kill off your own dreams and desires and purpose. You see, you have that much control over your own dream, your own desires, your own God-given purpose that not even God himself can, uh, can keep you from it. 
We are the only ones who can keep ourselves from accomplishing that God-given purpose that He's given us. And Satan knows that. And that's why he uses us against ourselves. He uses loved ones, friends, strangers, bosses, professionals, uh, uh, experts, people that we respect. Uh, he will use anyone and anything to get us to deny ourselves to hope for a future, to tell ourselves that God doesn't have anything for me, to, to, to believe his lies that there's nothing special about us. You know what? There is something special about you and each and every one of you and me too. And it's that one special little creative aspect of God himself that he has given you. And so fight hard. Fight hard fight every day to be exactly who God created you to be don't minimize yourself don't limit yourself don't deny yourself the greatest joy of all ex our experience as human beings uh, to be exactly who God created you to be and to do exactly what God has purposed you to do in this earth in the kingdom of God amen amen and God bless you fight the good fight of faith and fight the fight for your future amen let's go into this song of worship and I'll be back with closing prayer and our um, time of partnership Of 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for joining me for this word. I pray you were blessed, inspired, and encouraged, no matter what age you are, to see God's heart and see what does he have for you? What does he still have for you? What does he have for you to Day. Amen. And so uh, if you would like to partner with what God has for us as a congregation, for our future, as the house of his glory, please uh, go to the website and, uh, and go to the contact page. Click on the link that says join the congregation and align yourself with the hope and the future and the plans that God has for this congregation. Uh, uh, or you can text the word join to 818-873-3370. And if you would like to partner with this message right now, if you would like to say, hey, Father, I trust you to pour out this message in my life and to pour me out in the world to be a blessing uh, in someone else's life, to be a blessing uh, for the world as I fulfill your purpose uh, for me. You do that by aligning yourself through your finances. God says, hey, if you bring your tithes and your offering into the storehouse, I will pour you out a blessing so great it cannot be contained. So he's going to pour it out into you, the desires of your heart, and then he's going to pour you out as a blessing as well. And so however you give, you can do so right now. If you have an offering, if you have a need that you want like to sow a seed towards uh, members, if you would like to bring your tithe at this time, you can do so uh, at any giving link if you're watching us live or you're on the website or on the app. And however you give, thank you for your giving. It blesses me. It is a blessing to God's heart when you give. And he says, in blessing, I will bless you. So in other words, when you bless someone else, God is going to bless you too. 30, 60, 100 fold, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over whatever you give. God is giving it back to you. You. Amen. And so I thank you for your giving. God bless you for your giving. Let's go to this final closing prayer. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much once again for joining me today. Um, and so let's just thank God for this word. Amen. Father, we thank you for your heart towards us. We thank you that you have created us with power, with purpose, and that you've created that purpose as a connection to you, to your glory, uh, to your intentions in this world, as a way to reach people, to heal people, to save people, to draw people to the truth that you are God, that you are alive, that you love us, that you created us in your image and in your likeness, and that you want to deliver us from the hands of the enemy, that you've given us power over the enemy so that nothing should by any means hurt us. And so we thank you for teaching us and shaping us and molding us and opening our eyes as uh, Joshua 1 and 8 says that as we meditate on this word, as we observe to see ourselves uh doing and walking in this word and fulfilling this word uh, and see ourselves walking in the promises and the blessings uh, that you have given to us through this word. That is how we make our own way prosperous and we have good success. And so we thank you for the success that you have for us, for the purposes that you have for us, for the plans and the thoughts that you are always thinking towards us. Father, help us to 
to no longer be shackled by doubt, shackled by fear, shackled by insecurities, shackled by the lies that other people, uh, friends and bosses have told us uh, by way of the enemy. Help us to sort out uh, those deceptions and to walk in the truth of your word and the truth of your spirit, guiding us and leading us and being a lamp unto our footsteps, Father, uh, that we would not let anything uh, hold us back from accomplishing what you desire for us to accomplish, that each and every one of us has that one thing that only we can fulfill, but we will uh, no longer let sickness lack doubt, uh, um, circumstances, issues, lack of education, uh, lack of opportunity. We will no longer let anything stand in our way, but that we will fight that good fight of faith to see what you have for us, to fulfill what you have for us, to pursue what you have for us, that we would indeed be everything you created us each to be, that we would do everything that you have purposed us to do, that we would not leave behind uh, anything unfulfilled, and that at the end of our days, you would say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, well done. And so, Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your word and for conforming us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for being a good, 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 good God. We praise you for loving us and helping us, saving us and delivering us, forgiving us and cleansing us of all unrighteousness. We give you all glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless you all. Woohoo! I'm feeling the presence of the Lord in this place. I pray you feel him wherever you are as well. And so until next week, go in his glory. Walk in full power. Walk boldly in the power of God. And do your very best to fight to receive all the blessings of the kingdom of God that he has just for you. I love you. Bye-bye.